Hello and welcome. This is Kevin, also known as AWOL. Today we are making that, I guess everybody's calling these arrowheads. Um, I always thought it was just part of the whole zigzag family, but okay, so make things easier, let's call it an arrowhead. So I, um, if you're new to my channel, you will notice I am setting up my strings. I'm getting ready to make a nice smooth start. Um, and what I'm also doing here is where that red is in the pattern over there on the right hand side, I want that to be the darkest of this whole fade. So I'm trying to work out which colors go in which sequence. Oftentimes with my patterns, I don't actually use the colors that they actually, you know, exactly like, like what I'm going to make. Um, since it's six colors, it's easy to use the rainbow to be able to figure everything out. So basically, if red is number one and orange is number two and yellow is number three, then green is four, blue is five, and purple is six. So knowing that, I was able to work out that the um, darkest and the next two down from that are what number one, two, and three is. And so then I start on the fourth color, and that's how I went from like down to the lightest is the third one, and then it's the after that it goes the next three with the last one being the darkest of them all. All right. And all I did to get those lined up on top of there was to do a backwards four over top of the entire group. And then it goes off to the side and the next one goes over the entire group. And uh, well, here, you can see it here. So to go to the right, I'm going to use a regular figure four, pull it up through the loop and bring that to the top. Now the next one will go over what's left, all right? So again, it's a figure four, and this just goes down. So again, this is just lining up the strings to get it a nice smooth start. It's not necessary, but I like to do it because it makes the whole project start off all nice and neat. Um, I have heard that some people like to do two um, over the, the thing. It's I think it kind of spaces it out further. I don't see a reason for it personally. Um, it's a matter of preference, I'm sure, but I find that just doing it once over the entire group, everything comes out really, really smooth, and you don't have to worry about trying to make that super tight in order to make it come out the way you want it. Now, if you'll notice on the pattern, the first knot is just all by itself and then the next color comes in so I follow that exactly mind you this is not how I would typically start this off um, personally I would either do the to the teardrop kind of shape coming into it or um, maybe just have them all coming in in a chevron until I got to say either the purple or where that red is and then start it into this. But um, this time I wanted to do it a little bit differently. And um, basically, well, you'll, you'll kind of see a little bit why in next week's video. Um, and yeah, so this is, this is a bit of a break from that whole double wide thing that I've been doing. However, I'm doing this so that way you guys get a chance to practice doing this style of a bracelet, which is a little bit more, it's not, advanced. I, I would think this is maybe a little bit more intermediate, um, but I wanted to give you guys a chance to be able to look at the pattern, play with this a little bit before we go on to what will be um, clearly way more advanced. So the pattern is relatively simple. You can see like, so the, the lightest color right there, it kind of stopped. And so then the other ones kind of form their curves accordingly. So now as you see the, the lightest one is going to go over the top and then it's going to go down and it bounces back, right? So there's a whole lot of the ability to um, know when to make the turn based on what came be before it, right? So like the, the outer um, 
second red one or whatever, it made that little triangle. And then you just know that you don't cross over that. So then it, it's really, to me, this is one of the easier patterns when it comes to using all four knots. All right? So that was a right and a left. Here it's going to come down to the right. Then it's a right left at the very end when it's going to make for its diamond. Um, I know that this isn't necessarily like if I know I the tutorials for the double wide was a more about um, beginner stuff or at least started that way and now we're getting a little bit more advanced. Um, however, I think it, because this is why I gave you the pattern. The pattern is available over my website, by the way. Um, there will be a link in the comment area below. Um, the reason why we're kind of getting more advanced is because you, as you should be progressing in your knot ability, you're probably going to be looking for things that are a little bit more complicated. And this is how we're going to get there. As well as this is going to end up covering something we talked about in some of the earliest videos. And I kind of really wanted to get to that because I think this part is really a lot of fun. So, yeah. Um, the string is just doubled up. It's, uh, again, I think I cut this at uh, one third lengths, one third of a skein, which is just over two meters. However, because this uses the string evenly, I think I could have gotten away with cutting the string into a quarter length of a skein, which would be only two meters because every skein comes as eight meters. At least that's what it says on the label. It does vary a bit, but... Um, you can cut it into quarters and be able to make this. So you get a little bit more string that way. Um, I have a lot of string already cut into thirds, so it was just easier to go with that. The loop is a kumi. My wife did that up for me, and she did that up kind of a while ago, so I don't have any actual video footage to show you for that. So, um, And you can see here, it doesn't matter which side you work on first. Um, working as, on a portion will help make it go a lot faster. Um, just uh, an easier way of doing it, I suppose. So, if you have questions about this stuff, anything, just, just leave it in the comments. I will try to get it back to you. Um, yeah, I don't really know what else I can really tell you. Again, this is a six color, color fade. Any six colors would have done. If with six colors, of course, you could have done it in three or two colors, and it would have still turned out pretty cool, I suspect. Um, I have done this in two colors. It is kind of neat. So, yeah, a lot of breaks in the video. That's me running off to go help do things. Um, they had laundry today, had some other stuff going on, so, but kind of wanted to give you guys a just... This is all done in an afternoon. This is, again, this is a pretty easy pattern because you can work on large areas at a time. You don't have to do a single row or, and you don't have to stare at the pattern so much. Once you get the hang of how this works, if you're kind of watching the pattern, you'll, you'll be able to fly through this no problem at all. So, this pattern is, was done up on the six string of the stuff on my website like there's the ready-made um, graph paper and I consider it six string because if you only have six strings going into your loop there'll be 12 hanging down so it really depends on how you count it I know a lot of people like to call it 12 because it just seems like look at me I'm working with a bigger number but um, I like to look at it like how many strings do I actually need to have cut so it that's again it's just a matter of preference Hopefully uh, that doesn't confuse you guys too much. If it does, I can maybe draw something else up on the website. I don't know. You let me know in the comments. So. Yeah, this is, this is kind of fun. Um, again, you, length depends on how long you really want to make it. I try to do, you know, kind of an average, you know, that it'll fit anybody, but you know, figure out, you know, if you have your friend's wrist size already and you're making it for them, by all means, you know. 
um, ending it is just finishing that middle diamond and then bringing this, uh, the strings down in the next row. So that's relatively simple. Um, I'm trying to think what else, you know, kind of good insights I could give you. Oh, bringing it all into a group like that. That was putting the strings over the first one and then over the two, then over three, over four, and then going into a braid. Um, just kind of basically it's the reverse of how we started the whole thing. And again, it just cleans up the sides and gives it a nice, nice clean look. So hopefully you guys are getting the gist here. I well. Okay. So this is what we ended up with. And um, yeah, this is going to uh, work out perfect for what I have in mind. So, all right, next week, um, I think it'll be next Monday, I will show you what a double of this is like. So yeah, we'll be able to check that out here. Let's kind of zoom in on this. So I'm not sure that the colors are showing up very well. It's yeah, some, some colors just don't work on camera nearly as well. You'd have to see this in person, but it's gorgeous. It was a lot of fun to make and hopefully this has inspired you guys to try this for yourselves as well. So, all right. Well, until next time, don't get your strings in a bunch. <laughs>